start this off. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my project. Hey guys. So be sure to, uh, to turn in your GitHub URL to my email. Uh, make sure you've pushed up all your work. Uh, so we did a project check and make sure that your jQuery is also turned in. I think I have to submit progress reports today too. All right, so let me open up. I have a test site. Yeah, I do. Okay. So here's this random site I made that makes no sense. I think you guys recognize it. The I'm a sassy pants one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and implement some uh, jQuery today. And I want you guys to follow along with your own projects as well. So what I want you to do is open up your script.js file. And open up, well, first off, open up your projects. And from there, I want you guys to open up your script.js file. And again, be sure that you guys have your jQuery linked to your HTML file. So my HTML file, my script is linked over here. Uh, and my jQuery is uh, linked right above it. Now in my script.js file, um, the only thing I have so far is the document.ready function. And the document.ready, again, you can just copy and paste this. All it does is remember, what did I say last time? Can anyone tell me what document.ready does? It what? It makes sure it's ready, right? But what what does that mean? Everything, well, oh yeah, it does mean that we're only going to put our jQuery code inside uh, those two little containers, right? Well, it will still work. It will still work, huh? It does apply to the whole document, but it, the, the way it works is actually in the word itself. It says once the document is done loading, once it's ready, then run the following JavaScript code. What that means is only make this JavaScript run after everything in here is done loading. If you didn't have this, what could happen is your JavaScript starts loading at the same time as the HTML that it's trying to work on, right? So you have all this HTML in here. And it's loading at the same time as your JavaScript. Well, if your JavaScript is trying to work on your HTML, you don't want them to be loading up at the same time, right? Because the HTML might not exist while the jQuery or JavaScript is trying to work on it. That would be crappy. Can you guys think of an example? Like, let's say I put in some jQuery code like this. Um, without the document dot ready, so I do. Let's find something on here. Let's do um, on con. All right, let's do header. So we're finding this header. Dot HTML, and we're just gonna replace that with banana. Now, if we do this, there's a chance that because we didn't put this in document dot ready, what happens is it won't be able to find all the header elements because it, they haven't finished loading. So anything with the header class, so it's this h1, h1, h1 over here, right? These are the header elements. They might not have finished loading while I was trying to change it. So some of them might not change. So does anyone have questions about why we're using the document already and why it's important? Do you guys understand this concept? Okay. So again, we're, 
I'm uncommenting this and I'm putting this inside this document already. That way it says, okay, all the HTML is going to load first and now I can start using my, my jQuery or JavaScript because now I can start implementing any code to manipulate my HTML. So let's go to the first concept in jQuery. So uh, I'm going over some methods right now. So the first one I went over and that I already uh, showed you an example of is the HTML method. This is a method used to get or set the HTML content in the object. Now, getting and setting is another con uh, concept. Setting means we're changing the content inside of it. Getting means we're retrieving the content. So if I want to get whatever is inside, oops. If I want to get whatever's inside the header element, I could just not have any data inside and if I don't have any data inside, I'm asking for what's inside header, the HTML inside header. So to show you that that works, let's do an alert. An alert just pops up whatever you give it onto the screen. So I said refresh on this. And look at that. It's giving me SAS, right? Yeah, that's the alert. You like, <laughs> you like people giving you SAS? You're like people giving me sass. No, I like the alert. Yeah, the alert actually just pops up and it's like, alert, alarm. Then you'd really like the prompt. Will it ask you a question? We can even go over that. Okay. So this retrieves what's inside the header.html, right? So header.html, it's sass. So it just retrieved it. Now, if we want to replace what's in there, then we just give it some information to replace. I can put blah, blah, blah. And now, if I hit refresh, look at that. Or right, whatever I put in there, it's gonna replace the content again. If I leave it empty, it's gonna retrieve that content. That means get the content. If I set the content, meaning I'm setting stuff in there. So now let's say the header. This is a proper header. And so now I replace it with this is a proper header. Okay, so that alert. Mhm. Mm Yes, so this alert is actually not coming up right because it's just saying object, object. Now, the reason for that is because um, when you use jQuery, it finds every single collection of all that's in here. So, wait, why does it keep going to this? Okay, what jQuery does is it gives you a collection or basically a list of all the elements that have this class of header. So if you're trying to alert all of them, it's not going to make any sense because it's trying to print out all of them. And you actually have to loop through them to show each one. To actually show all of them, um, I would have to do alert and then this thing called for each. So what happens is, and I'm just going to have to go to the board for this.
I put something into a list, when you guys put something in a list, you guys usually use commas, right? Like, you know, okay. You go to the shopping list. Uh, cereal, bread, uh, I don't know, uh, hard drugs, whatever. <laughs> you guys are visiting the street pharmacist too. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So you're going to the regular pharmacist and the street pharmacist. So you guys have a list of things. Now if you want to put an array, you just surround it by these little brackets. That's it. That's an array. Now this is doing it for you in the background. So if I say, hey, give me, <laughs> put this into an alert. Now alert is in almost every program. So what you do is alert just says, on the screen, pop up whatever I give you. I can say, Once you guys have put an alert statement in your code, I want you guys to refresh your page. So hopefully you guys have your HTML page on a browser. If not, open up your uh, whatever HTML page you have onto your browser. So if you guys haven't done that before, all you do is open up your browser. So let's say Google Chrome. Click on File, Open, and then just find your HTML file and it'll open it up. This is called looking at your file locally. So here's me doing it. So there's a couple ways to do it. You can actually go to Finder. You can find the file. And you can just drag it onto the browser, and it'll open up. Or you can go to File, Open File, and do it that way. Just hit Open. You did it? <laughs> you did it. See?
Okay, excellent. Oh my god. Uh, and then I also want you guys to work in groups. So you two are going to be friends for today, then after that, enemies. Uh, you guys are going to be today. Is uh, Ashley going in today? Uh, no. Okay. Um, Noel and Caesar, can you guys work together? Okay. Yeah, I think you're going to have to move because there's more space up here. Make sure you guys check each other's code. And the document already, you want to put the end of the document already. Uh, notice that there's a beginning and end to the document already. So that it looks like this. Notice that this is the end to it. This is the beginning, this is the end.
same script, but you're linking to this one over here. So you're gonna put it right above that script that you created. So you don't have to do anything with this. All you're doing is linking to it. So let's go back to about me. And right above this one, you're gonna link to the jQuery. I'm so So file linking is an important concept because you have to understand how files work with one another. So let's say that I have my project over here, right? I have a whole bunch of files and I have to link a whole bunch of things together. Now linking means that in this index.html file, this is what gets displayed, right? Everything is going to get displayed only in my index.html file. I'm not going to load my CSS file. I'm not going to load my JavaScript file. What gets displayed is my index.html file. Only HTML files get displayed, OK? So in my HTML file, if I want content from different files, I have to link to them. When I link to them, I get the content that's inside them. So for CSS, in order to link to those files, I use this thing called link, and I give it an attribute of rel and a value of style sheet. Now the link to it, I have to use href, and then I link to where it's located. So now my, my style.css, from where I am in my index.html file, it's located in CSS and style.css. So there it is. Now all the styles in here are now included into this HTML file. Same thing with JavaScript, except JavaScript uses script. So to link to a JavaScript file, let's see, my JavaScript files are all under this folder called JS in here, so I can check. Ah, here's my JavaScript files. Which ones do I want to link to with this file? I want to link to my jQuery first. Um, so this is my jQuery. I've actually linked this to an online jQuery source code. You can do this online, or you can download the file and link to it there. And then I have a link to a whole bunch of other JavaScript files that have other JavaScript inside them. So what I did was I just said source equals javascript.script.js. And now I'm linked to this file. So everything inside here is now inside my index.html file. And that's it.
That's how you link to files. When you, so when you link to files, what you're doing is you're, you're essentially just importing the content from those files into your project. So you're always working from your HTML page. Does that make sense? Does anyone not understand what I'm talking about? Your HTML page is what you're going to be working with. And whenever you load up your, a page, it's not going to be loading up your JavaScript or your CSS files. It's going to be loading up your HTML file. Notice that I'm loading this HTML file right here, right? Index.html. And in there is where I'm going to be importing content. So I'm importing my CSS. I'm importing my JavaScript. Now, the reason we do this, we could have actually not had to do this. We could have had everything on one page, all of my content. I could have had all my, my JavaScript. I could have all my CSS on one page. But that makes your, your file huge. So the reason that you're linking to different pages is because you want to separate out content. You don't want all your JavaScript to be on the same, H, the same page as your HTML. You don't want all your CSS. You don't want any CSS or JavaScript to be on the same page as your HTML page. Because that's when it gets really confusing. That turns into a giant friggin' file really fast. So you're going to have thousands of lines of code that's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it's going to be really hard to see like where everything is. So we separate things out. And how we separate it out is by just creating another file and then just linking to it. And this is how we do it. So does that make sense to everybody? Nay? Yes? Yeah? OK. So this is why we're linking to files. OK, so now that we have our file link, now in our script.js, you guys are going to have this link over here. So, Sorry, you guys are going to have this code, not link. So don't worry about this. Make sure you guys have this document.ready function in there. If your neighbor, if your uh, partner doesn't, then make sure you give him that code and that the document.ready is done uh, correctly. Don't worry about um, you know why all this looks all weird and stuff. We're just going to be copying and pasting it for now. So now, after that's done, I want to make sure that you guys have your alerts working. So we have an alert, and we say, alarm. We hit save. And if it's linked correctly, then we just refresh that HTML page that it's linked to. And it should say, alarm. OK, so I want you guys to try that right now. Yeah, try it again. I want you guys to make sure that you guys have this all right. I know some of you guys are faster, some of you have so it's OK. So this is a whole bunch of JavaScript code that's on one page, right? So that's why we're trying to separate it out. So what you're going to do is you're going to link to that JavaScript file that you just created. I don't know if this is Which was script.js. So
t-shirt. Well, okay, so it's one of my clients. He just let me borrow, but he wouldn't do that. He would definitely not do that. But he let me borrow his name and check up stick because I was having issues and I was trying to like, get mine up and running. So he's like, here, I'll just do it. And then he did it for me. Um, yeah. So. This is one of your clients that's live? Yeah. All right, let's fix it. So, where's the site? I don't know. Okay, well, no, I mean, that's, <laughs> if you know all the information, we can fix it real fast, but this yeah, is, yeah. I need the class is more prior. No, yeah, 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 she, yeah, she just yeah. wanted to know, like, yeah. what that happened. happened. Uh, someone hacked the site. Somebody hacked Yeah. Why would they hack my site? Uh, because there's malicious people on there. Yeah. Yeah, because they can. But we can fix this really fast. Uh, they probably hacked into your, uh, godaddy.com or whatever it is. Or somebody that knows your client. Yeah, because there's no other way. I mean, is this built using PHP? I don't know. What does that mean? So, wait, how is this built? How is this site built? Like, how do you have access to it and everything? Well, like, usually something's going on. What do you mean? I mean, I coded it. You coded it, right. But, like, what did you use and what file transfer? You pushed it online, right? Yeah. Yeah, did you use FTP? Like, what, what did you use? I mean, do you have all the assets and everything? Yeah, somewhere in there. Find all the stuff first, and then we'll talk. Did you give it up to the client? Yeah, I gave everything to him, and he just did it. Okay, so then he's having a security issue. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't push it online or anything. He put it online. Okay, then he did it up on it. Okay. Yeah. He has a security issue where he uh, he got his site hacked. He, he had told me he's not using it in the site, so he said I can just use it for just my final. <laughs> But if he's hosting, that means he got his, his uh, credentials uh, reached. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the next part. All right, so now let's try and change some HTML that exists on our site. So I want you guys to find uh, some HTML. And if it doesn't have a class or an ID, give it a class or ID right now. So for instance, I have an HTML element that says header, uh, that has a class of header. So I'm going to change, or I'm going to find that. So I use a jQuery selector. I put header. Now what is this going to do? It's going to find every, exactly, it's going to find every HTML element with a class of header and put it into a list, right? Look at that. And then now we can perform any of the jQuery methods on these objects, on this jQuery object. This jQuery object is just a list of different things, right? It's a list of, of all the HTML elements with a class of header. If I, if I did this, uh, now what is it? If everything with the class of container. Now this is a jQuery object that ha uh, has a list of everything with a class of header. Every HTML element, sorry, every HTML element with a class of container. So now I'm going to change that back to header. What would happen if I did this? Uh, yeah. I put I changed the HTML inside of it to have the content of meow. So if I refresh this page now, look at that. So I want you guys to try that now. You don't have to do it with meow. No, I want you guys to try that meow. Oh, I mean, whatever class you guys want. Whatever class, whatever ID, whatever selector you guys want okay, to put in there. Okay, so I can have an H1? Yeah, you can just put H1. So every H1. So 
jQuery can take in all different types of selectors, right? Class, element selector. So here's an element selector. So if I wanted to select just every H1, I could do that instead of anything with a class. So do you guys see that? Now it changes anything with an H1 element.
detect element. And this allows us to see what's going on, what your errors are. Let's go to console. Ah, build to load resources, photo, and script. OK, so the photo is not loading because it doesn't exist anymore. So that's fine. And the script, we're just running into an error because we haven't finished building it yet. So for those of you guys who are done, I want you guys to try and implement the rest of the methods. So there's other methods like the CSS method, and I have an example for each one. CSS method, add class method, and attribute method. So next two pages, I have examples of how to use each one. And that way you guys can go ahead while, uh, so I think some of you guys are taking like advanced classes with me. Those of you who are gonna go faster. For those of you guys, you know, if we're taking this for the first time, I'm gonna be working with you guys. So, Let's go to your sublime text. And go to your script.js. Yeah. So now, uh, well, well, first off, you don't have an ending parentheses, right? Okay, so um, Heather has a good question about how to use the CSS method. Each method has its own set of rules that they make based on those methods. Every, every single one of these methods is created slightly different. And so you have to look at the rules for each method. Because these are all made to make things easier for you. But first you have to know how to use each one. So HTML is a get or set method, right? So now let's look at the other one. So I'm going to go back to the mic so have this all recorded. So our next method is going to be our CSS method. Now the CSS method is used to get or set the CSS of the object. For setting, the CSS method takes two arguments. So the first argument is the CSS property, and the second argument is the CSS value of the property. So let's try this out. So I want to make the any h1, I'm going to make the CSS, I'm going to make the font color, so color, and then comma, and the second argument is going to be whatever color I want to give it, so purple. So same thing with size. If you do width, what do you think the second argument is going to be? Whatever value you give it, right? So 100 pixels. So this is the same thing as if you were using um, CSS, except you're using it with comma instead of colon. So you just say, OK, color. 
purple. Now watch what happens. Now everything is in purple text. So this allows me to do this programmatically. And you might be wondering, okay, what's the purpose of me doing this HTML and this CSS uh, if I can just put this inside my HTML and I can just put this inside my CSS? There's no point in me doing this. Well, the reason we're doing this is to do things programmatically. That means when something happens, then something changes. So let's try that with using something called an event listener. So I'm going to go ahead and inside my HTML, I want you guys to do this with me. Um, I want you guys at the very top of your page to create a button. Give it a class of change. And inside there, you're going to put like something like click me or change button or something like that. So this is what the button should look like. Just something very simple. It's just a button. And again, the HTML for it is just literally typing the word button, giving it a class of change. Um, and I just chose a random class. I just gave it a class of change. And inside the button itself, we're going to put some content that just says click me or something like that. And then you close out that, that tag. Are we good so far? Now, in my script.js, what I'm going to do is say, OK, jQuery, now find anything that has a dot change class on it. So does something have a dot change class on it? This button, right? This button has a change class on it. So I'm finding this. And I'm going to use event listener called click. Whenever someone clicks on it, and now this is going to look really confusing, but it's basically when I pass an empty function like this, it just means do the following code block. Run the following code. That's all this means. I'm passing in something called an anonymous function. And that just means run the following block of code. So it's the same thing as you guys saw up here. Remember this document already? You, saw, you guys saw this weird thing that has this weird ending? This is an anonymous function. That just means it's a fancy way of saying run the following block of code. So when we put all this stuff in here, it just means run this code, right? Inside of this. So now we're running the following code, code, code whenever someone clicks on what? The change button, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this code inside here the CSS code, where I changed something to color purple. So now, if I refresh my page, well, everything's black. It didn't start off that way. But when I click on this button, boom, everything turns purple. Now we start to have some functionality based on events. So this is where programming comes in. It's you want things to change. changes the look of the art. Let's say that you have some robot, 
and you want to make it look like a ballerina. You just, the, you just click on the ballerina button, boom, the robot, you changed it with a picture of a ballerina. So this is something you can do with JavaScript. You can just change things out, you can make things happen. You can even animate things. So it moves around and stuff like that. It's really cool what you can do with it. A lot of cool things, especially when it comes to design, you guys can do a lot of cool things. You guys can make like scroll effects so it's like, you know, it doesn't immediately go down, it goes down. It, it like slowly scrolls down or it fades in. Fades out. That's actually a jQuery function, fade in and fade out. You guys can actually make your things fade in and fade out. It doesn't have to just be like, you know, immediate pop up, immediate pop in. So um, I think you guys would be more interested in jQuery UI. jQuery UI is actually for user, user interface. Now this is all a very design concept stuff, okay? So you guys understand user interface, user experience, right? You guys should know that by now. Like how, what the user wants, how to incorporate their ideas into a design that makes sense for what they want, their objectives, you know, like someone, someone gives you an idea, you know how to mock that up into a design and hand it back to them. You iterate with them, you talk to them, you say, hey, this is what we need to build. Okay, cool, let me, let me put that in. Okay, um, well, this interface will make sense for you guys because um, this design uh, like incorporates th these different themes that you're talking about. This is user interface and user design. You, you, you guys have gone over this kind of stuff, right? need to take my interactive media one class. Okay. Um, but it, essentially these are all just design concepts, right? So uh, going back to like jQuery, uh, jQuery UI allows you to do this because it's jQuery user interface. And let me show you some really cool things with jQuery UI that allows you to do some really complicated stuff using the exact same thing that we did right now. Just this super, super easy. So let's say that you wanted to make something draggable. If you wanted to make an element draggable, in jQuery UI, this is literally all you do. And now that element is draggable. I mean, drag it all around the, the, the screen. So jQuery UI is meant for designers to be able to implement functionality relatively easily. So let's say that you have, you know, this draggable interaction, right? Allows elements to be moved using the mouse. So you can do this. Right? Droppable. Mm -hmm. So, drop me in there. Cool, right? Resizable. So, someone's seeing something, ah, it doesn't look big enough. Well, I can just do this. This is jQuery UI. Selectable. And then if you hit shift, wait, is it shift? Uh, oh, no, command. This is through jQuery UI. Sortable, accordion, button, date picker. All these are very easy to use. The source code for this, it's going to, watch, it's going to look crazy. But literally, this is all you're doing. Right here, this is the code. One line. And you guys already know this part. Something with an ID of accordion. Okay, let's find it. Something that, oh, here we go. Div with an ID of accordion. Make it into an accordion. How do you make it into an accordion? Use the method called accordion. That, that's it. This is all the code that you need. So this allows you to do this functionality. Look at this. There's so many cool things. A date picker. Right? So I just click on here and look at that. I just click on one of these things, boom, puts the date in there. So these are all the functionality uh, that you can add and implement into there using very, very easy uh, methods. And jQuery does that for you. You don't have to write up all the code. You just have to say, oh, okay, what do I, what do I need to do? Like this is all their code that they're doing in there, like all crazy stuff, but you don't need to do that. You need to just do very simple things like a slider. All you need to do is put this little piece of code in there. That's it. Just this one method. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just learning how to add single methods to a jQuery object. So this is a single method, right? The CSS object or the CSS method. This is just a single method and allows you to change the color. So give me another CSS property to change. 
Okay, so let's change the font size to 100 pixels, one million dollars. Okay, so now I change that. So now if I hit click me, look at that. Cool, right? So this is how the CSS method works. All right, so let's move on to another method. Actually, let's take a quick break because I think you guys need some.